Welcome to the Coach and Crew Show. But let's get into, and we'll try to, really trying to keep this brief, but we'll get into the problems with the, what happened at the coaching staff. Well, the, the coaching staff was completely ill-prepared, and they did a horrible job this year. The only two coaches I would have kept, and I've said it all season long, is Choice and Coleman. Choice was the running backs coach. Coleman was the uh, defensive ends coach. I would keep those two. Everybody else I would have sent packing. Well, they announced at the end of the year. Now, we'll get into we did – we do have press passes. And we made a request from the Georgia Tech Athletic Department about a release. All we got was the official release that everyone else got on the website. So they went and talked to us and they would not give us an official statement. The only statement I've got from Stansberry is the one that he sent out to all the season ticket holders. And it basically is just making excuses and and after admitting that the season wasn't any good, says, look over here. We've got a great athletic department with the basketball team, both men's and women's, and with our women's volleyball team. All that's true. We have a great athletic department if you carve out football. But unfortunately, football is the biggest marketing campaign that a university can have in the NCAA. Everyone looks for what your football team is doing. Before Nick Saban, Alabama was a joke, and they were. They weren't getting good applicants. Now, everyone looks at Nick Saban and says, hey, they're a winner. They get more applicants to their school. They can be more selective on what applicants they allow into the school. Thus, the school gets better. Now, Alabama's academic reputation is going up. The same thing can be said for our rivals, UGA. UGA, 20 years ago, was a joke. My opinion, they still are. However, since they've had a good athletic program with Kirby Smart and before that, you know, we'll give Mark Rick some credit. They started getting more applicants. That leads to more competition of students coming in, which raises the standard of students coming in. You know, now they have to know how to read and write and not just color inside the lines. So now the, the school has a better academic reputation. The reverse is also true. When your football team stinks, your reputation is starting to decrease. Our academic side, they want to be the MIT of the South. I wouldn't even want to be the MIT of the North. Anything can stay up there. Just leave it alone. I'm so shocked that our academic people don't go full Vandy on us. But luckily they haven't done that yet. But it, it, since the 90s when I was walking around campus, our academic side has always been at war with the athletic side. There really needs to be some changes made. They need to do something and offer some liberal arts degrees, Get some allow the athletes to get in. It's not going to decrease the value of a degree from the Institute of Technology, all right? It's not. But they need to have a larger selection so that we can get athletes in. Athletics is a marketing tool for the university, and our eggheads over on the academic side just doesn't get it. And that's the biggest problem right there in a nutshell. Now, what happened here? We've got a big contract with Collins. He had a seven-year contract. He has four years left on it. We don't have the funds to buy the guy out. All right? Nothing we can do about that. Stansberry should have bit the bullet and got rid of him, as well as the coaches that they did get rid of. They got rid of offensive coordinator Pat No, uh, defensive, uh, co-defensive coordinator Nathan Burton, but we all know Thacker was the guy calling the plays. Thacker, rumor has it, Thacker got demoted to linebacker's coach and that Collins will be the true D.C. And cornerback's coach, Jeff Popovich. I'm not going to insult the guys. I hated that they lost their job. They deserve to have lost their job. But, you know, it, it affects their families and everything else. It is a was a horribly coached team. Collins was big on recruiting. He was a recruiting coordinator when he was here previously. And that's what he should be in college football as a recruiting coordinator. All he has is marketing plans. You know, his instead of having a depth chart, he has the ATL above the line. Ooh, 
ATL. Yeah, we get it. Hashtag 404. You go to the games. It's money down. You know, I get tired of that kind of crap. I don't need that marketing BS shoved down my throat continuously. However, that's not who they're appealing to. Because when we attend a game, everyone's like me. Old white guys in the stands. That's not who marketing's going after now. They want to get a younger crowd in there. They want to get a more diverse crowd. And I'm all for it. Do all of that stuff. Make football and sports relevant again at Georgia Institute of Technology. Please do. However, marketing alone doesn't do it. You have to have results on the field and results on the court. And right now, we have no results on the field. Collins isn't even involved in game planning or anything else. If you watch him at timeouts, if you watch him at anything else during the game, Collins doesn't do anything. His offensive and defensive coordinators are doing all the coaching. I was watching a game on TV that I wasn't in attendance for, and after halftime, he came out and the reporter asked him, what, change, what adjustments are you going to make at halftime, coach? And this came out of Collins' mouth. We're going to break it down. We had Yates break it down at halftime, and he's going to have a great second half. That's the dumbest thing I've heard a coach say, period. End of story. But that's about the depth of Jeff Collins right there. He's a hype guy. I'm a parent of an NCAA athlete and female. But when I ask her about coaching, different teams, everything else, she'll turn around and say, well, that's a hype guy. Basically, no respect for hype guys. They're just there to get you jacked up for the game. They don't contribute anything except for that. And when you have an entire staff of hype guys you get what we got this year. Nothing. Big losses and losing 0 to 100 against Notre Dame and UGA. Okay? So, we know that after dismissing those coaches, we're going to have Collins. We know we're going to have Collins for two more years because they hired an offensive coordinator from Tulane, Chip Long. Chip Long got a two year contract, over 800000 per year. So we know that Chip Long is married to the university for two years. They're going to keep Jeff Collins for those two years. Now, whether Chip Long is any good or not, I have no clue. Tulane finished 2-10, and 10, didn't really do anything, although he did put 35 points up on Oklahoma. But he did have a long string of games during the middle of the season against Cincinnati and Houston that are pretty good football teams. They scored 10 points on them. He might have scored 10 points about against UGA, which means he's better than what we had. Uh, he ran a, uh, an offense that seemed to be balanced between the pass and the run. It should fit our personnel, but we'll see what he can do. I don't see him as a savior. He's just a guy with a bucket in the lifeboat with all these holes in it, bailing water, just like the rest of us. We lost our best coach, Tashar Choice, who I would have kept, yeah, he's in demand. He got a job from Southern Cal as a running backs coach. It's a lateral move to a better school. He took it. Coincidentally or not, Jameer Gibbs, our best running back and probably the best running back in the ACC, maybe the best running back in the SEC also, if he was there, he's transferring. He entered a transfer portal. wonder if he's going to end up at Southern Cal. Him and Lincoln Riley, that might be a good combination. Can't blame the kid. He sees that uh, there's no future at Georgia Tech athletically and nothing to promote himself. He's leaving. The other running backs have all left too. J.P. Mason. He's declared for the draft. Heck of a player. He should get drafted. I'd draft him if I was the GM at a football team for the NFL. And also, Jemias Griffin. He's a running back. He was fourth. He was going to be redshirted this year, but he's fourth on the depth chart. He's transferring, as long as his brother, who's a defensive lineman. You know, our safety, Jania Thomas, he's elected not to come back. Jordan Yates, although he is a backup quarterback, he played half the season for us and has talent. You know, his uncle is the quarterback coach for the Atlanta Falcons. You have to say that he probably got some advice to say, get out. And he did. He entered the portal. So we're losing players like crazy. 
Collins is supposed to be known for this recruiting guru that had a top 25 class. Well, it's not a top 25 class anymore because there's already been four players that have verbally committed, decommitted already to Collins. The class has fallen apart. We'll say the running backs, they all developed, but they were all under Tashard, Tashard Choice, and now he's gone too. Offensive line, they didn't develop anybody on the offensive line. That offensive line didn't block anybody this season. And they darn near got our quarterbacks killed. And our offensive coordinator didn't know what he was doing. He was running all these slow developing plays, not giving our offensive line any chance. You can't have slow developing plays with guys pulling that aren't made for pulling and, and just doing counters and misdirection in the backfield. When you play against a good D line, they're in three yards in your backfield and stuff and everything you're doing, which is what happened to us most of the time. He didn't even make adjustments. At halftime, we never made adjustments. The only thing Tack Thacker on defense ever adjusted was going from a 3-3 to a 4-2. That's it. Never adjusted anything else. We did zero in-game coaching. All right? That's how bad our coaching was this year. They didn't develop the players. We never saw anything happen on our cornerbacks. Our quarterbacks were just beyond miserably bad this season. And most of the time, they were getting beat on plays, and they weren't even in the picture. Uh, you go watch them in person. I was at quite a few games this season and was just trying to focus on the cornerbacks, on what are they doing. I don't even think they knew what they were doing. The only guy on, in the secondary on, in the corners was our nickel, uh, Wesley Walker. He had a good season until he got injured, and it, it really showed. But he would get in there, and he'd make some plays. But as far as the rest of it goes, it wasn't any good at all. And whenever they subbed a younger player in, they couldn't get the job done. Matter of fact, most of the time they just blew coverage because they had no idea what they were doing in these zone defenses that we were running. So it, it was just bad coaching all the way around. They hired Tillman from Michigan State. Hey, he was a Georgia Tech guy. He's an NFL player. I hope he comes in and at least teaches these kids we have how to play cornerback. I have no faith that Collins is going to run a defense that works. He needs to simplify it. I would rather see our kids play man and get beat man than to sit there and try to run a complicated zone defensive scheme and be constantly out of position with guys running free and us making Kenny Pickett look like a Heisman Trophy winner. Um, it's, just, it's just atrocious that the lack of coaching that we've got well, the thing is, we get back to Chip Long. He did score 21 points against Ole Miss this season with Tulane. We played Ole Miss this year. Let's see how many points he can put up against, against them this year coming up. We went through all this. Our football team is, is horrible. And I really contradict Stansberry in his statement that he said that there was improvement made this year. There was no improvement made this year. It's going downhill. Obviously, he's lost the confidence of the players because the players are leaving. He's lost the confidence of the coaches because the coaches are leaving voluntarily. Tashar Choice left voluntarily. He's lost the confidence of the fans, myself. And from sitting in the press room, he's lost the confidence of the press, too. He's lost the confidence of the athletic department because when I ask them questions, I get this. They won't say anything, but I get a head shake, okay? Started talking to people with boosters and say, okay, the people with money. I don't have any money. They do. And they, are, they make decisions really and truly. And I talked to a couple of boosters. And the message I got was, Stansberry has just married himself to Collins. And that's a shame, because I have thought that Stansberry's done a really good job with the athletic department, with every program except for football. I think he ought to be given an opportunity to fix football. But he needs the money to do it. I don't know if he has the guts to do it, because if he had guts, he would have fired Jeff Collins this year, let him go and just came out and begged for money from the rest of us. That's the path to go. That's the gutsiest path to go. 
He didn't go that path. So now, from the guys I've talked to, Stansberry's married to Collins. When Collins goes, Stansberry's going to go. And it might be sooner than two years. That's what I got from there. Spent last weekend watching the Georgia High School Championship Games in person down at Georgia State. A lot of great football there. A lot of great young men playing football. They're going all over the country because a lot of them are being recruited from Pac-12 schools, Big Ten schools, Big 12, SEC, ACC. Guess who doesn't have any of these great athletes from the state of Georgia going to them? The Georgia Institute of Technology. So if we have this supposed great recruiter in Jeff Collins, why isn't any of these players from these championship teams considering Georgia Tech? That's the question that I'll leave for you as we head into signing day on Wednesday. We'll cover that too. 2022 right now looks pretty bleak. And it's going to make 3-9 2021 probably look like the glory days. Tantor out. Thank you for watching this edition of the Coach and Crew Show. We hope you enjoyed this video, and we hope you enjoy all of our videos. Please like and subscribe to our YouTube channel, as well as hitting the little bell in the corner to get all of our notifications. You can click on our logo as well to subscribe to it. And if you really like it, share it with your friends, and please leave a comment. Thank you for watching.